Hello, hello. Welcome to Think, Feel, Eat, episode number 24. Last week, I in episode 23, I introduced our goal weight identity. And in that, I said that we would be taking on a new identity. That when we want to become something in the future, we have to start thinking, feeling, and acting like that future someone. So I introduced a quote last week that went like this. If I got to stop my timer again. That went like this. What we are doing at the end of our journey is what we will do to stay there. Okay. And this is, of course, applicable to anything, right? So whatever, if we have any goals that we have, whatever we're doing when we got there, we know we have to do that to maintain it right? I was recently, for the very first time in my life, went to a physical therapist. I went twice, got my exercises, did, and I'm doing everything at home uh, because it was the kind of thing that I could do at home if I needed to go more. I wouldn't have, but I've never gone to a physical therapist before. And um, she said, you know, that you'll need to do these maintenance exercises. You will need to keep doing what I've taught you and what you've been doing to keep this up. You, can, you know, if you stop doing it for a period of time, then the pain will come back, the difficulties will return. And um, so it makes perfect sense that when we get to a certain level of health, wellness, whatever, that whatever took us there, we have to keep doing, right? And the same thing is true with weight loss or even more so, I think, I would say, with weight loss and with um, health goals, right? So what we are doing at the very end, so we are, so suppose today is the day before we reach our goal weight. Suppose tomorrow is the day that we are going to, we'll get on the scale and we are going to be at that new goal weight. And um, what we are doing this very day, the day before we get on that scale, the day before we're at that goal weight, whatever we are doing is what we have to do to stay there. So we usually think about this in terms of what we are doing to get there in terms of protocol, exercises, drinking water, sleeping, all the things that we've learned in the perfect storm are crucial, right? The perfect storm of weight loss. We have all of these elements coming together to create this perfect storm. So we have, we have a tendency to think, yeah, I need to do all of those things. But the truth is that whatever we are thinking will also be the thing that sustains us. And I talked last week about how the first time I lost 100 pounds, I lost it pretty quickly over like a year, year and a half, not like this long, you know, decade that I've been doing this time, but I did it um, pretty quickly and I had no thought changes whatsoever. And the day I reached my goal weight, I didn't think to myself, I am this new person, I weigh this size, I weigh, I weigh this amount, I wear this size, and you know, I have to, this is what I have to think, this is what I have to feel, this is what I have to act to stay here. I never thought that. Never crossed my mind, right? I had been white knuckling the whole time. Um, so we not only have to do the same things to stay there, but we also have to think what we are thinking. So in order to get there, it makes sense that we have to move ahead in our thoughts, move ahead in our feelings, move ahead to that day and take on that new identity, take on that new persona, if you will, of that new person. So last week I reviewed the Think, Feel, Act cycle, which is a tool that coaches and mental health uh, specialists uh, use in all areas of life, not just eating and weight loss, the, just the spinoff, thus the spinoff of Think, Feel, Eat, the title of this podcast. Um, but we know from last week and from different times that we have introduced and discussed the Think, Feel, Act cycle that we think a thought and then we feel something and then we act on that, okay? So just a little brief summary. Last week we talked about how it is not a circumstance that makes us feel a certain thing and act a certain way. And we know this is true because I gave the example of somebody coming in late. It's not the person coming in late 
that makes us act either cold and distant or kind and helpful and, and, um, and compassionate. It's not the person coming in late that causes it. It's what we think about it. So remember I had two scenarios last week, person coming in late, we think um, she ruins a meeting by coming late. We feel, you know, um, exasperated by her and then we take certain actions. But if we found out that her husband was terminally ill and that is why she's late all the time, we wouldn't think she ruins the meetings by coming in late. Instead, we would think she's late again because her husband is terminally ill. And then we'd feel sympathy, empathy, kindness, compassion, and we would act a different way. So we know think, feel, act is always underplaying, always um, in the midst of us. It's always there. That's why we are so driven by thoughts and feelings, right? And so we know Think, Feel, Act is always operating in the background, even when we can't see it, even when we don't realize it. When we examine something and we look and say, why did I do that? Then we can go back up and say, oh, I was feeling this. Why did I feel that? Because I thought this, right? So we can go back and discover what that is. All right, so we need a new identity in order to make it to our goal. In order to hit our goal weight, we need a new identity. And we think we take on a new identity all the time, right? It's not uncommon for adults to take on many identities. I'm really shaking the table again. Many identities throughout their lives. That's not uncommon at all, right? We just got married, new identity. We're a wife, we're a husband, we're a spouse, right? Uh, we just had a baby. We're no longer childless. We're no longer footloose and fancy free baby, right? We are instead a mother, a father, a parent. We just got a different job. Now we are an employee of whatever that is. We become that new identity, right? And all the while, while we're leading up to that, usually we know that it's gonna take place. And all the while leading up to that, we are preparing for that identity, right? We're even putting it on, right? We're even wearing, you know, mother shirts right now because we're gonna become a mother and we're fixing the nursery and we are going into that new identity. And so we can do the same thing with goal weight identity. I talked last week about how it's really important that we don't say I am because that defines who we are in, an, in a derogatory way, right? And I mentioned Brene Brown, I heard her talking about this on her podcast with her uh, child that um, her child told the kindergarten teacher many years ago the kindergarten teacher said, you're, be, you're, mess, you're messy. And the little girl, five years old, said, I'm not messy. I'm making a mess, right? So we need to, I am, we're not all of those negative things that we say all the time. We might do negative things. I was just talking about this with my daughter a little while ago when we were working out, you know, about the wording that we use with children. You know, we don't say, for example, you're bad. We say you're having bad behavior. Right? We don't say you are or I am because that brings on a whole identity. Now with goal weight identity, we want a new identity, right? We want to be that new person. We want to be that lighter weight person. So I'm going to walk you through the goal weight identity packet today. And then after that, I have um, how we can act and memorize new thoughts and how we um, can practice those new thoughts. So I'm gonna share my screen, hopefully without too much shaking here. I gotta figure that out. Just got this new desk, which is the, the, my sons and sons-in-law just fixed it all up for me last weekend. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen and I can find everything this time, believe it or not. All right, here we are. So the packet looks like this, the, the, and you're gonna get this. If you're subscribed to DonnaReach.com, it will come to you next week when you receive episode 24. So I record on Thursdays and then usually the next Wednesday, unless uh, my tech girl is on vacation. Um, if she is, it just comes a couple days later, but I record on Thursdays and next Wednesday, you get it in your email, in your inbox, okay? And at that point, it is available at YouTube, it's available at the blog and it's available at iTunes, pod being different places like that. Now, if you want to, you know, watch something sooner than that, you need to uh, join 
Donna's um, weight loss lifestyle group on Facebook. Okay, it's a private group, and that way you can see this live, just like the people here today are watching some, some of you are on live. Unfortunately, because I'm going through Zoom to record it, I can't see who's on live and I can't see your comments or anything, which is really sad. But um, so I just have to assume that you're giving me some love and you're out there cheering me on. You guys are so good to me. All right, so this, but this packet will be in the email. If you're subscribed to DonnaMish.com, it will be in the email. Okay, so two places to get the videos live at the Facebook group, in the Facebook group, and you can get the videos, the podcast, and the outline, and the free packet uh, when you're subscribed to DonnaReach.com. All right, so it's uh, here the first page. You'll know you got the right one because I have a lot of freebies up at DonnaReach.com. So you will know uh, that you're at the right place. Goal weight identity shifts will be the first page. Next is steps for creating goal weight identity. And then thoughts and feelings for goal weight identity samples. And then your own worksheet. So I want you to come away from today's video ready to apply this packet yourself, ready to print it off. You can print in black and white. We don't have a ton of color on a lot of these things because it does cost more for listeners to print um, you know, in color. You can print, most of the time, they just have a small amount of color with the exception of the motivating moments and the um, self-talk cards. Those do have a lot of color on them. But um, So you can print in grayscale, you'd rather. All right, so here we have the center part that we are pulling out of um, the whole model, right? We're pulling out thinking, feeling, and acting. All right, so we have our current weight. And when we stay here, when we don't go down anymore, even if we have more weight to lose, when we stay here, we are at, we have that identity. Okay. It's a certain thought that gives us a certain feeling that leads to many actions. So when we do not lose weight, when we're trying to lose weight or we desire to lose weight, we have, we start out at 165 and we end at 165. Nothing changes. And in between there is our current weight identity. That is who or what we are, what we think we are, what we say we are, what we tell ourselves, how we think of ourselves, how we feel about ourselves. Those are all, all make up the goal weight identity. All right. And that those thoughts, if they are not leading us, to weight loss, they are keeping us right here. Now, on the other hand, when we are at 145 and we stay at 145, we have a different identity, just like we have a different identity before a new job and following after a new job, right? Maybe we previously worked at um, Homestead High School right here near me. And prior to that, we worked at the YMCA, right? So we have a different, those are all close to me that, that I uh, drive by all the time. So we have a different identity. We are now a Homestead High School employee or whatever, right? And so that identity is created here and it keeps us here. Now the goal or my goal for you and for me is to start taking on this identity now. Right? Because we know from the quote at the beginning of this episode that whatever we're doing at the end is what we have to do to stay there. And we also know that when we think certain thoughts, they lead to certain feelings and they lead to more advantageous actions. Right? So here we are over here. When we weigh 145 and we continue to weigh 145, we will think something else. So let's look here at these um, weight identities. So when we stay at our current weight identity, we often think certain thoughts that give us a, a certain feeling and that lead to actions that keep us there. So um, let me see where that is. All right, so on, on the left here, these are the things that we might be thinking. Now, yours could be completely different than mine. These are some that I 
have often thought during my weight loss journey that kept me at a certain spot before. So we might think I can't stay on any plan. We might think I'm a junk food junkie. We might think I never will get to my goal weight. We might think I always give in to urges. We might think I have no control over food. We might think I don't like healthy food. That's what I always said. Um, thankfully, I found uh, optimal protein, um, like a macro counting. And so I do actually like my healthier foods. I just didn't like keto foods and I didn't know that. I will always be fat. I'm at my set point weight. That's a big one for me, especially as I get older. Um, I can never lose the last 20 pounds. I always go off and on healthy eating plans. I have too many special occasions to get to my goal weight. I'm too old to wear a size six. It's a waste of time and money to eat on protocol at restaurants. Those were some of my thoughts that, that kept me stuck. All right, so some of the thoughts instead that I feel like I will have at my new weight, my new identity, uh, which is for me is 145, size six, sleeveless dresses, wearing anything in my closet at any time, not thinking, oh man, I feel too fat today to wear that, something that I can always wear. And at that weight, I think that I will think, or I hope I will think, I keep my weight off easily. I always stay on my plan. I decide ahead of time what I'm going to eat. I create my protocol, then stick with it. I plan for special treats ahead of time and do not eat them unless they're planned. I enjoy healthy foods. I maintain my weight the same way I lost it. It's gonna be a big one that we're gonna be learning about um, in the perfect storm for maintenance. I plan for special occasions. I choose healthy foods in restaurants and I use my adult brain to make food decisions, not my toddler brain. We had a lot of instruction on that when we did our decide ahead of time. I had two episodes on decide ahead of time. Um, I have my planner right here. I can tell you what numbers they were. They were, <clears throat> I should have brought my water back. I'm not used to being in my office and, have, and needing, every, needing to make sure I have everything back here um, all the time. So, well, it was, hmm, doesn't appear to be in my new, new and improved planner. Uh, they are, it was the one big decision that we make ahead of time, here it is. And the one big decision we make ahead of time was um, episode number 21. And I'm gonna put that here in the notes. And that was the one big decision. And then number 22 was um, the daily decision, okay? And we, I talked a lot about the adult brain and the toddler brain and that kind of thing during those episodes. All right. So then here are the steps. And these, this is what you'll be doing when you print this packet off for yourself. Don't just listen to me talk about it and, you know, not a lot. <laughs> because what really makes a difference in our lives is applying, right? It makes a huge difference whether you just hear somebody teach about something or you apply it to your life. So here are your steps. Number one, make a list of thoughts that you will have and believe at your goal weight, as your goal weight identity. Okay? And you can use some of these over here if you'd like. I'm gonna teach you how to use monkey bar thoughts also in just a moment. Two, recite, write, and memorize those beliefs. Three, discover what feelings each thought creates. Write these beside your thoughts and beliefs and use these as pocket thoughts as you take on your goal weight identity. I talked last week about how this was applicable to all kinds of goals and specifically with my time management piece. I know you guys are out there my time management private client, huge. What is your pocket thought that causes you to do the next thing, to grow your business, to homeschool, to raise your children, to uh, be the best employee, whatever it is that you're trying to apply, right? And those pocket thoughts, that is you're gonna grab a happy, Grab a helpful thought and put it in your pocket. Never let it fade away. Grab a helpful thought and put it in your pocket. Save it for a rainy day, right? You never know when you're going to need, I'm not a singer, you never know when you are going to need those pocket thoughts. All right, so 
when here's a sample okay of mine all right that i think i will feel and that i will think and feel at my goal weight now don't forget we act based on our feelings so these feelings over here are super important we are going to act however we feel right that's why we say i ate my feelings that's why we say i was going to go get a bunch done but i just felt too depressed once i got that bad news or whatever it is or we 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 take those feelings and then we act on them so they, these are really really important right so i think that i'm going to think i stay on protocol easily and i think this is going to make me feel empowered so what kind of actions am i going to take when i feel empowered i'm going to take way better actions than when i feel disempowered or discouraged or overcome or um desperate or um uh, feelings associated with failure right so i decide ahead of time what to eat that's one thought and that gives me a feeling of self-control this is a huge one for me i always feel a feeling of self-control when i do episodes number 21 and 22. <laughs> all right i feel i eat at least 80 percent fuel food well this can do a few things for people this can make you feel empowered this makes me feel caring for myself it can make you feel you know healthier or inspired or motivated right you need a thought that gives you the feeling that gives you the actions <coughs> Next, I stay in integrity with myself. That makes me feel sure. Love, love self-integrity. I taught about that in episodes number. <laughs> I should have just left this page open. Episodes, we had two episodes on self-integrity and they were 19 and 20. All right, and I'm at my right size body. That makes me feel proud. When I'm proud of myself, I'm going to treat myself differently, right? I'm going to do things to keep on feeling that way. And we're going to do things to keep on wearing those clothes. I love the right clothes. I love the right, I love the size clothes that I wear. And that might make us feel attractive. Now, we can't always just jump right over to um, those thoughts right we talked about this with the power of positive thinking and what to say when you talk to yourself that we can't always just jump over to i'm at my right size body and i i stay on my protocol all the time and you know i eat 80 percent fuel foods and you know all of these things that we can't we don't believe and then we are stopped in our tracks with our feeling like disbelief you know uh, disinterested um unempowered and then we don't take the actions right it's just like with the abcs of self-integrity a minimum baseline this is too big we've made too big of a jump we're trying to go across the monkey bars as you see in the picture here we're trying to go from here all the way over to the other side even though we don't believe that and we're just trying to to work our way over there and just hustle 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 over to the other side of the monkey bars but we do not believe that so we have something that I appropriately call monkey bar thoughts to bridge from one side to the other, okay? And a lot of times you'll hear these called ladder thoughts, you'll hear them called bridge thoughts. Um, I like to associate everything with children because children are amazing. And so I call them monkey bar thoughts because plus I just think it's plain way more festive to call them monkey bar thoughts. And festive is good, right? So instead we can put things in front of it like I can, I am learning to, I am determined to, I am able to, I have the ability to, I am curious, I wonder, I'm open to, okay? And we can put those with it. So instead, I am learning to stay on protocol easily. I am determined to decide ahead of time what to eat. I am curious how I can at least eat 80% fuel foods. I have the ability to stay in integrity with myself. I am, uh, I wonder how I will 
be at my right size body or when I will be at my right size body or I can't wait to be at my right size body. So we might not be able to go all the way over, right? So we're going to just use whatever we can to get there with our monkey bar thoughts. Now here's your worksheet. So you're gonna have your one thought, one thought on each line, okay? And one feeling on each line. Now from this thought and this feeling, we're gonna have tons of good actions. That's the goal is to get us to the good actions, the actions that do what we, what the thought is giving us and the action, the actions that will get us to our goal. But only one thought on each line, dot, 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 and one feeling on each line that goes with that thought. So this one, this feeling goes with that thought, this feeling goes with that thought, and so forth, just like you see in the sample up here, okay? So one thought with a monkey bar term uh, phrasing and one feeling that goes with that, right? And then from that, we are going to pick the thought or more than one thought that we can put in our pocket, that we can have there for a rainy day, that we can always, always remember. Now, let yourself dream a little bit, right? I don't think it's good when we are, you know, off on a tangent and we're like, you know, yes, I'm at my right size body. I have power positive thinking. I believe it. I believe I'm a size six. I believe that I'm tiny. I believe, you know, all these kind of thoughts that aren't true. I don't, I don't think that that helps us. But I think we can also dream a little bit more than we do. And maybe more than we have been when we had negative thoughts and negative feelings, right? So, um, I told this story before, but you know, I have a lot of grandkids. I have seven grandkids and um, uh, six of them are three and under. And when the two girls who are now three were potty training, their cousins, um, one is, one was, one is like overly, overly super, super dramatic and darling. And they're both absolutely darling, but one is like very verbal and just like, you know, kind of, kind of reminds me of me. <laughs> As I did this, I thought, that's Sophie and that's me. Oh my word. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, kind of like me. And um, when she was potty training, when the girls were potty training, it was about the same time, they would come in on Nana Day and uh, Sophie especially, she would, you know, the mom, her mom would tell me, you know, the, all the rundown, you know, how, how when she has to put her pull-ups on, how, you know, and then she would make a big deal about the panties, you know, the frozen panties, and uh, Elsa and Anna and Olaf, and, um, you know, her mom would give me the rundown, and Sophie would be there like, you know, I potty. I, 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 what, what does she always call it? She didn't say I'm potty trained. She would say, I potty and potty, I potty and potty. And you know, my daughter was back behind her going, you know, like she doesn't really do it, you know? <laughs> and, and she'd say, I have frozen panties. I have frozen panties, you know? And I'd be like, you wear big girl panties and you don't pee pee in them? No, I know pee pee in frozen panties. And Kara's back there going, she does, she does all the time, you know? <laughs> And, you know, then she, you know, pulls up her little dress to show me her panties and she's like, ta-da! All right. So I think that we need a little bit more of that, right? A little bit more of that faith that it's going to, that we're going to get there, right? I don't think that, you know, we need to be completely disillusioned, you know, or completely deceiving ourselves. But at the same time, I think that we could use a little bit of that. You think about you know, most of you know that I'm a Christian and in Christian teachings, there is a lot about the faith of children, right? But it's not just in Christian teachings, it's everywhere. I mean, it is in all religious texts, all historical texts, all of them talk about having faith like a child, about having, you know, about loving like a child, about believing like a child, um, you know, ha about, uh, you know, what children think and believe and, and their, their unending faith and their unwavering faith and things like that. And I think that that would probably just really serve us here, right? To just think, you know, I am not wearing the sleeveless, but I'm almost ready to wear the sleeveless, right? Just like I have on the frozen panties, 
Ta-da! You know, just a little bit more of the ta-das, a little bit more of the fanfare, a little bit more of believing something that we aren't quite, at, where we're not quite there yet, but we're on our way, right? And so, yes, I think saying something that is absolutely positively not true that's going to set us back is a bad idea. But I also think having the faith of a little child would, uh, would help us a little bit too. So this is how we take on our goal weight identity. We uh, memorize those thoughts, right? I, tell, I just told two clients today, take these two, take the, your best two thoughts from today's coaching and put them on cards, put them on sticky notes, put them in your pocket, put, know when you're gonna use them, know what those thoughts are gonna lead to feeling wise and know what actions you are going to have as a result of those feelings. Memorize them. Um, you know, act it out, right? Be an actor, becoming that completely different person. And eventually, our, we can drop the monkey bar phrasing, right? Eventually, we will be able to say that without I am learning to, I am able to, I wonder, I, I, I believe I can, I'm, I'm going, I'm uh, preparing to those type of monkey bar thoughts and phrases. We won't need those eventually, right? We'll just be ta-da all the time. But in the meantime, you can use the monkey bar phrasing to just go over one rung at a time. Just one more rung, one more rung, one more rung. All right. Thank you for joining me on episode number 24 of the Think, Feel, Eat podcast. Um, it is now almost August 1st. So it is like, I don't know, let me look. It is... Um, yeah, it's a little after 6.30. Uh, it's not the time. It is July 30th. It is almost August. And that means new uh, intermittent fasting course. So you can sign up, intermittentfastingcourse.com. Okay, it's just intermittentfastingcourse.com. It's an easy URL. And you can put in the code SAVE20. And then you'll get 20 dollars off of the August course. It will start on Monday, which will be the third. I, I'm pretty sure that's right. It will be start on Monday the third. And we are excited to get another session going. Because remember when we have the perfect storm of weight loss, we have all of these pillars, right? And our food, what we eat, when we eat, and the amount that we eat, that's one pillar. Our food is one of the pillars. We can knock that pillar out, get that fasting under our belt, get those fasting hours, learn how to fast 16, 18, however many hours, 20 hours uh, a day, um, and we will be well on our way to the eating part, right? We'll keep on um, adding to the other pillar. So that is uh, intermittent fasting course dot com and the deadline will be sunday night august 2nd at midnight and i hope to see you in your classroom on monday and if not i will see you next week on think feel eat thanks a lot